Our subject in this video is we're going to use an LM555 timer to control power SCRs to create a pulsating DC output. This is going to be built on my earlier video on LM555 using it as a phase power control for triax and a half wave SCR rectification circuit. This is going to be full wave rectification. And the question I'm sure is, okay, what exactly use is this? That I'm going to give you some examples right now. If any of you are familiar with three phase, this is a three phase circuit. Of course, it has three legs or connections. This is a full wave DC rectifier, but part of the rectifiers, three of the rectifiers have been replaced by SCRs. By controlling the firing angles on the SCRs on this three phase full wave bridge design, I can vary my power output to drive welding equipment, high voltage DC motors, and whatnot. Here's a schematic example of something being used in the welder industry. This is interesting. It has two step-down transformers, two complete SCR-based H-bridge um, full-wave bridges connected in series to add the power. Or, as you can see here, here's another version of a transformer, step-down. The reason we step down the voltage on welding equipment is the welding voltage is fairly low. You're not going to put 480 on the end of a welder. Forget that. But again, you notice that this is a full wave bridge design using six SCRs. Here's your control circuitry. The control circuitry not only knows when to fire the SCRs to produce the needed output, but it will read the voltage, it will check the current, it, and adjust those firing angles to what it needs to do. All right, what we have here is an upgraded version of my earlier um, setup. This time I'm using an SCR, an SCR-based optocoupler. I've changed out and eliminated the H11L1 optocoupler for a CD4093 quad 2 input NOR gate with Schmidt trigger. I have pre-rectified my uh, AC to DC and I can produce, if you watch the meter, I'm putting 24 volts in and as you can see I can uh, cut the output up and down. The idea, this is again pulsating DC. It's not half wave, it is full wave pulsating DC. Okay, this is the same circuit as I had before, running off 24 volts AC. Now we're at a full 120 volts AC input to this diode bridge. Would help if I cut the power on. And you can see the voltage output across the lamp is about 105.5 volts. I will explain why that works in the following schematics. And note from before, we're using the CD4093 is a quad 2 input NAND gate, not a NOR gate. This, of course, shows some examples of all types of SCRs. They can ha handle hundreds of amps and, and well over a thousand volts. Let's take this one for instance. It has the internal equivalent of two SCRs. It will handle 1600 volts at 56 amps. So this of course is going to act as a heat sink. 
here's your connections over here these would be the gate cathode connections for each individual SCR that's connected from cathode to anode and so forth this is designed to learn circuit theory and to give you some ideas what is out there and a lot of this is drawn off my experience in troubleshooting and repairing equipment in the welder industry here is my original schematic from the previous video gone the diode bridge is gone that resistor is gone this optocoupler is gone transistor gone these two resistors gone our new circuit takes a completely different tact I'm still using my 12.6 volt AC uh, center tap transformer but now I've used it in a differing configuration quickly let's look at this transformer configuration and what it's giving us it is the equivalent of this circuit here it does produce a full wave pulsating DC at test point one as connected there and it's going to produce okay that when you connect this transformer with the center tap as a common you cut the output voltage by half so what would be an output in the old system of uh, around 17 18 volts peak when you filter it through a capacitor now I'm producing a peak of only 9 volts that again is you I use this blocking diode D1 it is um, to and it's filtered and regulated to give me 5 volts here is the output from test point 3 okay test point 3 is down here You'll notice that I run this through a 470 ohm resistor and a 5 volt Zener diode and that gives me an output here from 0 to 5 volts. So that works very well. So what you have here at test point 3 with the Zener diode it clips off the over voltage going into the input of the 4093 and at test point 2 I get a test point 2 right here I get a fairly nice square wave output if you look at the ch um, channel 1 is what I'm interested in by the way this is 120 Hertz it is not 60 if you're on a 50 cycle system then it's going to be 100 Hertz from here to here is 2.5 milliseconds we can do better than this and the trip my LM555 the polarity it will have to be inverted because I need a negative going narrow pulse all right my output which was a something like 2 milliseconds wide is too wide for this application so what I have installed here is this capacitor 0.1 microfarad and a 47 4.7 K resistor to ground forms a differentiator circuit and at test point four I get a very narrow negative going pulse to trip my LM555 of 266 microseconds. which is which an output 4 is what's going to trigger my LM555 transformer center tapped puts out 9 volts D, um, full wave DC average the Zener limits this input to 5 volts peak you get a square wave pulse here it's differentiated and inverted at test point four and that is used to trigger my LM555 another change from the original 
is I change the 100k to a 50k and this of course is 5 volts very power efficient um, the LM7805 doesn't even need a heat sink in this design all right this is basically a basic representation of a full wave diode bridge but up here you notice I replaced two of the diodes on the positive going side of the circuit with SCRs. By tripping on and controlling these two SCRs, I can control the output to, te that, to test point two. Um, so let's add some gate circuitry to these uh, SCRs and see what we get. Here is the same circuit you just saw, but this time I have added optocouplers and resistors to my gate to trip on my SCR gates. They're always, as usual, tripped on from the anode side through the optocoupler by, just, by controlling the phase input from the LM555 or whatever other circuits I'm using. I can precisely control my full wave uh, DC output. While I have 25.2 volts going in, I'll get about, oh, I don't know, a half a volt to 23 volts DC, approximately unfiltered pulsating DC output. Finally, here's another version of it. Again, I tested this at initially at 25 volts to keep, um, to keep it, to keep the, uh, possibility of shock down. Uh, I, I'm presenting them at a higher voltage for information only. Don't do it unless you know what you're doing or under supervision. Nonetheless, the output at test point two, four wave pulsating DC. And then I use this as a phase control for the SCR and I get zero to 23 volts. Or in the case of the other 120 volts when I removed the transformer. It was zero to about a hundred and seven volts. Again, you take the RMS and multiply by 0.9, and that's approximately what your output is. Um, in this circuit here, now these optocouplers are a little hard to find. You can use one of the triac optocouplers as a direct replacement for this and it works the same it only conducts on half because you only got a positive going half cycle anyway so the triac output optocouplers we looked at early in earlier projects will work just fine on this